Burberry from Bug Bug here today, ready to sing some songs and have some rhymes and a story too as well. In June, there's a special day called Empathy Day, where we focus on people's feelings, showing understanding and valuing other people's feelings. It's something you can do right from when your children are very little, and it's a great skill to have as you grow. So today, special book bug, there's a lovely song called I Can Clap My Hands, and you can use it to talk about feelings and showing warmth to other people. Right, we haven't said hello. Have a little wave. Wave your hands and say hello. Right, ready. If you're big like Book Bug, you can pat your knees yourself. And if you're little, somebody can help you. Hello everyone, hello everyone, glad that you could come. Hello everyone, hello everyone, glad that you could come. I, 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 glad that you could come. I, 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 glad that you could come. Now we've got our little book bug song to the tune of the wheels on the bus. You need your busy bee and your marching ants and your book bug that loves to read, read, read. The bees in the bush go buzz, 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 buzz. The bees in the bush go buzz, buzz, buzz all day long. The ants in the grass go much, 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 much. The ants in the grass go much, 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 all day long. The book books in the trees go read, 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 read. The book books in the trees go read, 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 all day long. You ready for the first song? This is a good one to have a really good look at your little one's face. Doesn't matter if you're bigger, you can still snuggle in. Do you know it? It's called Eyes, Nose, Cheeky, Cheeky, Chin. You have to concentrate on getting the right bits, otherwise you get in a muddle. You ready? Eyes, nose, cheeky, cheeky, chin. Cheeky, cheeky, chin, nose, eyes. Eyes, nose, cheeky, cheeky, chin. Cheeky, cheeky, chin, nose, eyes. Eyes, nose, cheeky, cheeky, chin, cheeky, cheeky, chin, nose, eyes. Eyes, nose, cheeky, cheeky, chin, cheeky, cheeky, chin, nose, eyes. Do you know, I really get in a muddle with that one. I wonder if you can do it. Right, this is our new one now. It's called I Can Clap My Hands. It's got lots of actions. And it's a song that you can use as an echo song. If you look on the BookBug website or download the app onto your phone, you can use the BookBug Song and Rhyme Library. And if you can look up, I can look up my hands, you'll find it as an echo and you'll be able to do it like that. Are you ready? Ready for the actions? I can clap my hands. I can stamp my feet. I can turn around. I can feel the beat, I can knock my knees, I can touch my toes, I can sing along, that's how it goes. But there's more to me than you can see, I can feel so high, I can feel so low. I can feel so yes, I can feel so no, I can feel so high, I can feel so low, I can feel so yes, I can feel so no, but there's more to me than you can see. It's a great one, isn't it? Should we sing it again? Ready with the actions. Clapping first. You ready, book bug? I can clap my hands. I can stamp my feet. I can turn around. I can feel the beat. I can knock my knees. I can touch my toes. I can sing along, that's how it goes. But there's more to me than you can 
see, I can feel so high, I can feel so low, I can feel so yes, I can feel so no, I can feel so high, I can feel so low, I can feel so yes, I can feel so no, but there's more to me than you can see. It's a good one to talk about feelings, isn't it? It's a great thing to do. Right, story next. I sit in comfortably. The story is a good old fairy tale, The Elves and the Shoemaker. There's some people being very, very kind in this story. Have a look out for it. You too, book bug. I hope you enjoy it. The story of the elves and the shoemaker. Once upon a time, long ago, there lived a shoemaker and his wife. Times had been very hard and they were very poor. And the shoemaker was down to his last piece of leather to make his last pair of shoes. He had drawn the shape that he had to cut out on the leather and he put them onto his workbench and they sadly went off to bed, feeling rather sad and worried about the future. But something amazing was going to happen because when the shoemaker came downstairs in the morning, he saw an amazing pair of shoes, beautifully made. Oh my goodness, he shouted to his wife. Who could have made those shoes? Do they belong to us? Can we sell them? Look at the stitching, it's perfect. It's so tiny and so perfectly beautiful. Wow! We'll be able to sell them and get some more leather and some food. They were gazing at the shoes when there was a knock on the door and a very nicely dressed man came in and said, I've been looking at your shoes through the window. Please can I buy them? If they fit. He tried them on and was so delighted that the shoes fit and he went away with them and he was going to tell everybody in the town about the beautiful shoes he'd bought. And even better, he left them a little pile of gold, enough gold to buy more food and some more leather. So the shoemaker and his wife were very, very happy. They bought some green leather and some yellow leather and put it on to the workbench ready for the morning so he could make some more shoes. And off they went to bed, feeling a little bit happier. Well, in the morning, when the shoemaker came downstairs, he didn't find green leather and yellow leather. He found two beautiful pairs of shoes, a little pair of green boots and a little pair of ladies leather shoes. He shouted his wife to come and look. Come and look at these, my dear. Somebody has made the shoes again. I wonder who it can be. They are so beautiful. And look at the perfect stitching. So tiny and so neat. I wonder if we'll be able to sell them and buy some more leather. There was a knock on the door. And in came a lady and a man. They took one look at the shoes, asked if they could try them on, and when they fit, they were so happy. They went away with them, telling the shoemaker they would tell the whole town about the beautiful shoes, and leaving them a bigger pile of money. Oh, my goodness! Some more food, some coal for the fire, and some more leather. And that's what happened in the next weeks and months ahead. The shoemaker and his wife would put leather onto the workbench and in the morning there were shoes. They were so, so lucky that they got a great big pile of gold and they were able to buy themselves some lovely new clothes. And they were very, very smiley and happy about that. So now they had lots of shoes for their shelves for everybody to come and look at and buy. Red ones and orange ones 
and green ones. But they had a worry. They didn't know who to thank for their lovely, lovely shoes. They didn't know who was helping them, so they came up with a plan. They decided they needed to hide and see what happened in the workshop through the night. So they hid behind the curtain in the corner of the workshop, tucked away where nobody could see. And they put some leather onto the workbench and they waited. It got darker and the clock ticked. Very soon they heard a noise. Was it mice? No! It was not one little elf, but two little elves. They jumped up on the workbench. One had a little hammer and they looked at the leather and before they could even believe their eyes, the shoemaker and his wife saw the little elves start to hammer and start to tap and hammer and tap and so and before they knew what had happened, the whole night had passed and the little elves had made two beautiful pairs of boots. They stretched their arms and they yawned and off they went, looking even tireder than when they came in their little raggy clothes. And off they went. The shoemaker and his wife came out from behind the curtain and looked at the beautiful boots, a beautiful yellow pair of ladies' boots and a very smart orange pair of gentlemen boots. They couldn't believe it. It's little elves that are helping us. They're making the shoes and that's why the little stitches are so neat because they're very small. How are we ever going to help them? So they thought of a plan. They put those shoes on the shelf, ready to sell. And they thought what they could do to help the little elves. Did you notice, said the shoemaker's wife, their clothes were very raggy and they had nothing on their feet and they looked a bit cold. Hmm, said the shoemaker, I did notice that. How can we help them in the way that they helped us? I know, said the shoemaker's wife. I think we should make them some clothes and you can make them some boots. So that's what they did. They worked and worked and worked. The shoemaker made the boots and his wife made a suit of clothes. All nice and bright and shiny with lovely strong boots to keep their little feet warm. Well, they had to hide again because they wanted to see what would happen when the little elves came back. So they quietly and carefully hid behind the curtain again and they waited. They waited till it got dark and the clock was ticking. And they heard a noise across the workshop floor. They knew it wasn't little mice this time. They knew it was the little elves. And here they are again. They were all ready to do some more work. And they looked around the workbench. They couldn't see any leather at all. And then they saw the lovely suits of clothing. And they held them up to them. And they realised that they must be for them. Oh my goodness, let's go off and try them on, they said, and scampered down off the workbench to try them on. While the shoemaker and his wife watched, they saw the little elves come back, all dressed in their lovely new clothes and their strong new boots. They were so happy they danced for joy. No more shoes to make. We can go off into the world and help somebody else. 
they did a little dance and off they went. Their toes weren't cold anymore and their clothes weren't raggedy and off they skipped across the floor and out of the door. Very quietly, the shoemaker and his wife came back to the workbench. Oh my goodness, how happy they were. We were able to help our little friends. They helped us. We're not poor anymore. And we were able to help them. They're warm and cosy and off on another adventure. And the shoemaker and his wife lived happily ever after. Did you enjoy your story? Those little elves were so kind to the shoemaker and his wife. And in the end, they got a treat as well. Now, Bookbug and I want to sing our favourite Bookbug song. We sing it very often at our Bookbug sessions and everybody loves it. It's got a bit of a bounce and it's got a bit of a tickle and it's got a cuddle and a snuggle at the end. It's Pop a Little Pancake. Are you ready, Bookbug? Pop a little pancake into a pan. Pop a little pancake into a pan. Pop a little pancake into a pan. That's for my dinner today. Squeeze a little lemon with a squeeze, a squeeze, squeeze. Squeeze a little lemon with a squeeze, a squeeze, squeeze. Squeeze a little lemon with a squeeze, a squeeze, squeeze. That's for my dinner today. Shake a little sugar with a shake, a shake, shake. Shake a little sugar with a shake a shake shake. Shake a little sugar with a shake a shake shake. That's for my dinner today. Toss a little pancake into the air. Toss a little pancake into the air. Toss a little pancake into the air. That's for my dinner today. Eat a little pancake with a num num num. Eat a little pancake with a num num num. Eat a little pancake with a num num num. That's for my dinner today. Hey! Right, that was great. How about, if you're happy and you know it? We all know that one. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Now we're going to do wave to your friends. If you're happy and you know it, wave to your friends. Hello. If you're happy and you know it, wave to your friends. Hello. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, wave to your friends. Hello. What about? What's next? <gasps> but Buck says blow a kiss. If you're happy and you know it, blow a kiss. If you're happy and you know it, blow a kiss. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, blow a kiss. What about have a cuddle? If you're happy and you know it, have a cuddle. If you're happy and you know it, have a cuddle. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, have a cuddle. Cuddles are great. If you're feeling happy, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling a bit low, having a cuddle. That's the best thing. A lovely bosy. Time for Ali Bally. There we are. Here's Book Book having a cuddle. Ali Bally, Ali Bally Bee, sitting on your mommy's knee, greeting for a wee bobby to buy some quarters candy. Ali Bali, Ali Bali be sitting on your daddy's knee, greeting for a wee bobby to buy some coulter's candy. There we are. Right, so I hope you enjoyed your session today, and we'll see you all again another day. So before we go, we have to say, Bye-bye to everybody. Bye-bye, book bug. Bye-bye, everyone. And we sing our goodbye song. Are you ready to patch your knees? Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Glad that you could come. 
Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Glad that you could come. Ay, 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 ay. Glad that you could come. Ay, 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 ay. Glad that you could come. Oh, what's that, Bug Bug? Oh, Bug Bug says, remember to think about other people's feelings.